chapter 33. Please give me a like. I'd appreciate it. Evening officer, Dad says. He's smiling like maybe they'll be that'll distract more from the fact that Dad and I are both being used as, as meat shields. To his credit, Moore doesn't rise to the bait. He squints past us, trying to get a glimpse of Toby and CJ. We get a report of shots fired inside. These friends of yours? CJ showed, CJ's gun is shoved deep into the small of my back. Definitely not, I mumble. Anybody else left in the house? I shake my head. We don't want any trouble, Toby shouts over Dad's shoulder. Just stand down and let us pass. We can all walk away from this. More glances between me and Dad. You taking them with you? You want us to? This town would be better for a couple fewer Munsons, don't you think? I can see more chewing this over. The son of a bitch is actually considering it. Actually considering standing back to let CJ and Toby drag us away to whatever to whatever deep ditch they've got, they've got dug for us. Somewhere on the edge of town. Backups on the way, is what he eventually says. It's not the fervent denial I'd love to hear, but at least he's not rolling out the red carpet for our execution. This property will be knee-deep in cops in a few minutes, and if you want things to go your way, you'd better start making progress. Um, you better start making things easy on yourselves now. Drop your weapons. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Toby and CJ exchange side long looks. Moore tightens his grip on his on, on his gun. Drop them now. The house windows explode. Fuck. Moore shouts. I hit the ground in something between a controlled dive and a ragdoll toss. Glass rains down around me. I can definitely feel the heat of the flames now that reach out towards us, gobbling us gobbling up the night air, charring the peeling and clot boards of the walls. He's up. I can barely hear Toby's mutter over the crackling of the fire, but the words send a chill th through me. Carefully, I lift my head, feeling slivers of the broken broken windows slip through my hair and hoping that I won't see what I, th I, I think I'm about to. Sure enough, Moore's on his feet. One hand on the roof of his of, of his squad car and the other planted on the top of his head. He's staring at the burning house in shock, the firelight making his shock expression dance. And most importantly, he's broken cover. Do it, Toby says, as if I'm having trouble hearing. Then Moore is definitely out of earshot because he doesn't move. He doesn't even flinch, and I'm only halfway through a, a shout at, Get down! When CJ's trigger happy finger squeezes, and it's not even the first time I've heard a gun go off, not even, um, not even tonight, but it's the first time I've seen a bullet strike a human being. It arrows straight across the open car window and plunges deep into Moore's side and sprays, a spray of something wet goes up, but the blood look, looks black caught between the moonlight and the blazing fire. Moore spins and staggers and goes down. His scream more of a punched out surprise than animal pain. Not that this has any impact on our unwelcome visitors. Toby just claps CJ on the shoulder. Come on. There's a growing puddle of blood on the ground. I can't look away. You're just gonna leave him here? Just be grateful it wasn't your dad, Junior, CJ says, or, or you. It is just sh shock ringing in my ears. Is it just shock ringing in my ears? Or are those police sirens? My money is on the ladder. CJ and Toby's are exchanging slightly panicked looks. Come on, Toby says again. And then he and CJ are sprinting up the drive, arrowing for the vague outline of a shitty old Mustang that I can just pick out in the nighttime shadows of an overgrown maple tree. Moore isn't moving so much anymore. I take a fumbling step toward him. What are you doing? Dad hisses, grabbing my arm. 
I yanked myself free and stumbled to Moore's side, tumbling to my knees next to him. There's a huge dark stain spreading across his right side, and his breath is coming in little hitches. His eyes are open and staring up at the stars, and even in the gloom I can um, tell that his pupils are blown wide. Panic. Shock? Who knows? This isn't the kind of thing they teach you in health class. Off some more? Hey, can you hear me? I patted his shoulder, feeling more than a little useless. Eddie, Dad says, don't be stupid. We have to get out of here. At my shaking, more groans. Munson? Hey, 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 you gonna be okay? Did something, did someone fucking shoot me? Eddie, Dad hisses. He's holding my arm now, strong enough to pull me back to my feet, and he won't let me go no, no matter how hard I resist. There's more cops on the way. Get in the van. I just can't leave him here. Yes, you can. Are you serious? He got shot because of us. He got shot because CJ shot him, that's all. Oh, but how you do but how do you think that's gonna play out for us if we're still here when those squad cars pull up? I stare at him as a suit smudged face and wide eyes. I'm still start staring at him when the corner of Dad's mouth pulls up in that crooked smile. Come on, kid, he says, radiating that months and magic. Think about your lady, your audition. You want to make it to California, don't you? Something heavy sinks into the pit of my stomach. California. He's right. There's no way I can explain this to Paige. Not if I, if I stick around. Not if I absorb the ball of shit that's headed my way with those flashing red and blue lights at my feet. More groans again. I pull my, my, my arm free of Dad's grip and kneel beside more. And, mil, and kneel beside more tentatively because I'm literally only going off of what I've seen in the movies. I press my hands to the part of Moore's torso that looks like looks the wettest. He hisses a pained gasp. Dad smiles, flattens into a grim line. Didn't think you were that much of a fool. Stay, I urge him. We can explain it to the cops. It'll be easier if there's two of us. That's not how it works. He's already backing away from me. I can see something glinting in, in, his, in his hand. My van keys. He must have lift, lifted them when he was dragging me away from more. I hadn't even noticed. Guitar picks, lock picks, pick, pickpocketing. You figure out one. You figure out the other. Nothing we will say will make a difference to them. Then stay because, because I need you. I try my own crooked smile. But, but there's something stinging at my eyes, ruining the effect. I tell myself it's just the smoke from the burning house. It'd be um, pretty shitty if you ditched me again right now. Not after we made all those plans. The firelight dancing across Dad's face makes him look like a marble statue. He, he watches me for a long moment as those sirens grow nearer and nearer. Beneath my, my hands, more twitches and curses. You're the one changing the plan, Eddie, Dad finally says, and I didn't sign up for the new one. He nods, decisive, tosses the keys once and catch, catches them again. I'll leave her somewhere near Hawkins. Good luck, kid. Munson, Munson's don't do luck. Yeah, well, I think you're going to need it. And then all I can see is his back retreating, my van's taillights retreating, my father retreating. And just like that, and just like every time he walks out of my life, I, I'm left in the dirt to pick up the pieces. Chapter 34. I should probably, I should probably be surprised that it's taken me 18 years to land in a lockup for the first time. It sure as hell surprises everyone else. But as I stare at the lock and the barred door, listening to the buzz of activity out in the police bullpen, all I feel is numb. Officer down. That's right, the Munson place. Ambulance on the way. We'll need the fire department on the scene. 
Chaos has unfolded as soon as the pair of squad cars had zoomed to a stop in, in, in my front yard. I don't know how many cops have been present at the scene. It could have been any number between 2 and 20 for all I, all I could process. The only thing that existed to me was the press of more stomach beneath my hands and the memory of Dad's retreating back behind my eyelids. What would you have done? Would you have tried to save the cop or would you have headed to California? It had taken two cops to haul me away from more, one holding on to each of my arms. Is he going to be okay? I'd ask them, a little dazed and a little out of it. It's his stomach, I think. It, it, is he going to be? We've got a suspect. One of the cops barked into a shoulder walkie. It's the Munson kid. We'll bring him in now. I hadn't protested. Not when they handcuffed me, not when they showed me, shoved me into the back of the squad car. What would um, have been the, been the point? And they probably didn't read him his Miranda rights. I'd known this would happen. Dad had known this would happen. But I'd stayed away. And so all there was left to do was to drown in the consequences. They hadn't given me a chance to wash my hands before they trotted me into the police station. Moore's blood is still under my fingernails, crusted um, onto the knees of my jeans. And since Hawkins isn't big enough for more than a, 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 drunk, a drunk tank, there's no toilet or sink in the cell. Drunks get to sit in the messes they made, they make. I scrub my hands over my eyes, screw crusted on blood. All I want to do is, 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 is tear my face off. If a new one grows in his place, maybe it'll, it'll make me a different person. Someone who wasn't such a complete fuck up. Hey, Junior. Chief Hopper looms into the frame of my blank st stare. He's huge as ever. Near, nearly blotting out, blotting out the light. And his face is impassive as he watches me through the bars. For once, I don't feel the urge to correct him on the nickname. On the nickname. These guys been hassling you? He asked, nodding back towards the burning fluorescent lights of the bull, bullpen. No, my voice is a smoke-singed croak. I realize in that moment how thirsty I, I am. He nods. A moment later, he's reaching through the bars. It takes me a second to figure out why. My eyes struggling to focus through the dim light and shock. He's got a paper cup of water holding it out for me. Thought you might need it, he says. Come on, my arm's tired. I slouch toward him, taking the cup. One, one sip runs down my scorched throat, and suddenly this is the best thing I've ever tasted. I gulp down the rest before remembering that I wanted to save some, some to clean my hands, and that the chief of police is watching me drink like a dehydrated Labrador. I wipe my mouth on my sleeve. Maybe I can, I can save whatever shred, shreds of dignity are left by glaring at him. Maybe it'll seem like defiance. Maybe not, though, because there's a twist of something almost like a, like pity on Hopper's face. Moore's out of surgery, he says. Is he... Docs say the bullet missed anything major against all odds. Blood loss wasn't even that bad. I tuck my hands under my thighs. He'll hobble out of the hospital with a scar to show him the ladies and not much else. He's fine, kid. He pauses like he's searching for the, for the next words. He says you tried to help him. I shrug. I'm not sure if anything more will be digging this hole deeper for myself. He also says there was another man who didn't stick around. A man who looked a lot like you. I shrug, shrug again. This one I'm definitely not chipping in on. I knew your old man at school, Hopper says. It's like it's a non-sequitur. I don't know that word, S-E-Q-U-I-T-U-R, though we both know it's not. A few years behind me, but I knew him. Everyone knew him. If there was a, a shitstorm kicking off, Al Munson was always the furthest person from the center. He leans a shoulder against the wall, um, crossing his arms over his chest. Funny thing was, if you looked hard enough, if you looked hard enough, you started to notice he was usually the person who, who, who kicked it off in the first place. 
I don't need another reminder of what a dumbass I was to trust my dad. So I just clunk my cup down on the bench. Am I free to go? It comes out hollow. I know the answer before I, I see the twist of Hopper's mouth. I know before I even ask the question. Not without bail, he says. Your house burned down, Junior. Someone burned your house down. That's arson. And until we can dig into it, for a second, the fog dueling my mind parts and a flash of angry protests pile up inside my school. Why would I burn down my own house? Did you miss the two guys at the scene who shot one of your cops? Isn't it obvious I'm the victim here? But just as quickly as the clouds had rolled away, they roll back in again. All I can do is listen as he continues. No one's pressing the charges. No one's, no one's pressing charges, not till we figure out what's going on, which means we're not going to be asking questions. He's watching me closely through the bars. It's in your best interest if you're, if you're here to answer them. I can't keep you in Hawkins. I'm not going to try. But I will tell you that if you disappear, you'll be making a universe of trouble for yourself. You'll only be doing what your dad would have done, what he did, what he did do. And I don't have you pegged like that, not yet. He straightens up, shaking um, out his shoulder with a sigh. Of course you've got a life, lifetime to prove me wrong. I just look at him, my gaze dull. The edges have been sanded off the world, sanded off me. Do I get a phone call, I ask? There's a tinge of pity in his eyes as he reaches for the keys on his belt. Sure, he says, follow me. Maybe Hopper takes pity on me because he doesn't lead me into the bullpen. Instead, I trail, I trail him the long way through the police station, squinting in the light that, that filters through the windows. Sometime between my house burning down and now the sun's come up and a new terrible day has begun. Harper stops outside a door. Police chief is inscribed in the frosted glass. He's letting me use his office. Don't try to steal anything, he says, pushing the door open for me. I'll know. Yes, sir. You go over 15 minutes. I'm pulling the plug. Yes, sir. Phone books on the desk. Wayne's number's in there. I checked. I just nod. Now, there used to be a time where... We had phone books <laughs> and everyone's name was in the phone book with their telephone number on it. Uh, there was a time when I probably knew 10 or 15 people's telephone number. Cause when you, when you dialed it, you, you had to remember, you had to have it memorized. Um, so I knew all my friends telephone numbers, you know, back, back, this is back in the eighties. Um, and, and then early nineties, um, you know, now most people don't even know their telephone number, <laughs> their own telephone number. I just nod. He studies my face, looking for something. I don't care what he finds. Okay, he finally says, stepping aside. I, I, I sidle around him and pace towards his desk. I don't need to look back um, over my shoulder to know that he's still there. The door is still wide open. He's keeping an eye on me. Why wouldn't he? Nobody in their right mind would let a criminal loose in their office without supervision. I keep my back to him as I pick up the phone and dial. No phone book necessary. I know, I know the number by heart. Hello? Paige's voice is rusty with sleep when she picks up, and I add yet another tick to the tally of fuck-ups in my roster. It's three hours earlier for her out in L.A., practically the middle of the night. I must have woken her up. Paige? Hey, it's Eddie. Eddie? I hear a rustle through the receiver as she sits up in the bed. I've never seen her apartment, but I imagine it now. Open and airy. Big windows with the first rays of golden California sunshine peeking through. Paige's dark hair tussled around her, her, her pretty freckled f uh, face. An orange tree in the courtyard outside. Paradise. Are you on the road already? What time is it? No, I, oh my God, it's four in the morning. Why did you call me at four in the morning, you psycho? She's laughing through, an, through the insult. You excited to see me? It's barely been a week. 
I know. I, I swallow hard. This is going to hurt. Listen, Paige, I have to tell you something. Are you okay? The laughter is gone now, drained away. I did that to her. What's wrong? I'm okay, but I'm not going to make the audition. The silence that stretches over the line after the, that is heavy. It sits on my chest, suffocating me. Run that past me again? She finally, she finally says flat, I can't come to California. Not right now. Hopper's words had only confirmed what I'd already realized watching Dad run, run away from Moore's breeding, bleeding body in the drive outside our, our burning house. When Toby and CJ had, had, had shown up on our doorstep, they'd brought Junior with them. There was no escaping that shadow, that shadow now, not even all the way out on the West Coast. If I'd run with Dad, I'd never um, have been able to stop. I'd have to spend my life dodging the law the way that Dad spends his, the way everybody in this town already thinks I do. Are you serious? Paige says. This is a bad joke. It's not a joke. For fuck's sake, Eddie, I wince flinching back from the receiver. Behind me, I hear Hopper clear his throat uncomfortably. Paige's voice carries. This isn't something we can just reschedule. You know how important this is. I know, I fumble, but she blows right past me. This is your shot. You wanted this. I know. This was my shot. Oh, God. Are there tears in her voice? I stuck my um, neck out to get you, get you this audition. This was going to make both of us you and me, in it together. I know. It's all I can say, like a stupid broken record. Then where are you? What was more important than continue, than, than, than coming to L.A.? I can already hear it, the way she thinks about me. It's changing. Even, even if I had the best excuse in the world, now I'm the guy who screwed her over, and it's um, only going to get worse from here. I grit my teeth. I'm at the police station. Another moment of nauseating quiet on the other end of the line. What did you do? And there it is. Not what happened or are you okay or what did you do? Does it matter? I snap. Yeah, it matters. She bites. Bites back. Right, because this isn't the story you told Davy Fitzroy. Don't. But I'm on a roll, so I plow through her and, and keep going. Barback turned rock hero. No room in there for a little um, tarnish, huh? You're telling me there's no one on WR's roster who's seen the inside of a jail cell? Don't be an asshole, she says. But it's too late. I'm already an asshole. I've been an asshole all along. I'm just the last person in all of Hawkins to accept it. No, sure. You, you've got... No, sure. You've only got a place for delinquent musicians after they've started making you money. Fuck you! Then there's just a dial tone, and I'm glaring at the receiver in my hand, hoping that some, somewhere out, out in sunny Cal Golden California, Paige can feel it. You finished? Hopper asked, and shit, I forgot he was here, listening in on that entire train wreck. Yeah... I say, slamming the phone back into the cradle. I'm finished. Hey, you guys, if you haven't already done so, please smash that like button. Click on the link for chapters 35 through 37, which I'll read very soon. Bye for now.